Today, I'm going to show you how to turn on lights in Photoshop. Can you understand? What? Uh... All right, so today is all about turning on lights in Photoshop. I got a message from a Photillustrator master who's working on a composite, a really cool composite, that needed to turn on some lights that were off in his scene. So he needed to turn those on in Photoshop and I'm gonna show you how I do that. So by the end of this video, you are going to be a master at turning on lights in Photoshop. <laughs> All right, so before we get started in this episode, I have to warn you that it is a long one, all right? I get a little bit long-winded and I show a little bit more than I should, and I don't mean that. Give you a lot of good bonuses. All right, so if you want to take your composites to the next level, level, go on over to photillustrator.com and check out my premium compositing tutorials. Also check out some of the free YouTube tutorials that I'm doing just like this one. And most definitely do not skip checking out the Make Awesome Pictures podcast. It totally pew, 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 rocks. Speaking of Make Awesome Pictures, I think I'm going to dub this YouTube video series, these tutorials, Make Awesome Pictures video tutorial. How do you like that? Without further ado, like I said, I'm making a long video, even longer by chatting here. So let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial and check out how to turn lights on in Photoshop. All right, so here we are today in Photoshop and we are going to turn some lights on this image that uh, Richard sent me and it is a flat image. It's a pretty cool image. I mean, that is a really cool car. I'd like to have that car. Um, probably on what I make as a portrait photographer, <laughs> probably not going to happen, but it is a cool, cool car. My clients actually have cars like that. Anyway, so we're going to take this image from here to here, and we're going to turn on some lights on this car and on the, uh, I guess the garages or the storage units or whatever these are in the background. Uh, it's done a really good job. I like uh, the sky here. looks really, really cool. Uh, we could use a little bit more, uh, I guess, coloring here on the top of the building to help us kind of be more convincing that this sky actually exists with this image. So may maybe some more highlights on the trees and things like that. We have the sun here. So we know that it would be kind of glaring maybe just a tad bit over the edges here on this side. There's a lot we could do to really kind of pump this image up just a little bit more and really make it a bit more dynamic. Uh, but this tutorial is really just about lights. So let's get into this. Let's turn off the lights that we do have here. And we're gonna start off with, I use two different colors in two different blending modes to get this job done and quite a few layers to be honest with you. I'm sure it could be done in less layers. I don't know. First, we're going to hit our B for brush because we want our brush on. We're going to be on white. And then I'm also going to use a color 867B00, which gives us this poopy yellow color, like if you had diarrhea. Uh, and we're going to start off with that color, I think. All right, so we're gonna go up to our brush dynamics here, brush settings, all right? I call them brush dynamics. I think they should do that because that sounds cooler. Anyway, just make sure that your arrow here is shooting straight up 90 degrees, and then we're just gonna bring that brush in here, and that's just gonna give us that kind of angle like it is moving back away from us, not straight on. If it were perfectly round, you kind of have this round, it doesn't look like it's fading back or anything like that. So. I just hold it up there. I want to see if that angle works. It looks like it's still a little bit too round. So we're just going to bring that in a little bit more. That's looking pretty solid right there. I like that. So we're going to go with it. And then we're just going to come up here and you can see the red here. Uh, and I want to go to the top end of that on the upper half, if you will, of that red and go to a little bit thicker portion. So we're going to have some spill over here at the top. So we're going to go right here and I'm just going to go Make sure that you're at a hundred percent flow. 
and then we're just gonna go right here just like that and you can see at the very top here right up in here that we have spillover now obviously that's not what it would look like in real life all right and then I'm just gonna go down here and we're gonna do it at this one and I'm only gonna do two of these lights here for this demonstration right there very good and then I'm going to double tap that layer that's gonna bring up my layer styling and so what we see here is these little uh, uh, grates or whatever this thing is, um, panels in the wall, that type of thing. And you can see a dark area. So that's a dark area underneath. That's kind of shadow area. And in real life, that light would not be shining into that. So we're gonna change that up here with our, uh, we're just gonna use gray and underline layer. And I'm gonna push Option or Alt, and I'm gonna bring this right piece over. And as I do that, you're gonna see that light kind of fade a little bit but you're going to see those black areas kind of pump up a little bit just like that and then we'll bring this other one over and that really kind of brings in those dark areas so that makes it look like okay that light isn't shining into the shadows because it wouldn't do that so that's how we do that in blend if and press okay and then i'm going to go up here and change my blend mode to color dodge and i kind of like what the new update in photoshop you just hover over those and it'll change it and show you what those look like. That's kind of cool, all right? So you look at that, I'm looking at that. I almost like screen a little bit better. I don't like light and screen. Let's go with screen. I usually do color dodge, but I kind of dig screen on this one. Make another layer and then we're gonna go to our white because that's not normal. A yellow light like that is not normal so what is normal is a white light with a little bit of tone yellow to it so let's go in here and i'm just kind of changing my brush size up here i want to see here and we're just going to go there and then I'm bring it smaller here and of course as you go down each of those you're just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and then back up this side bigger and bigger and bigger and actually we could go over here let's do one here so we, I can show you what we're going to do over here. So we got, nope. We want our poopy yellow color right there. Good. And then we're going to bring our awesome white color here. Nope. Awesome white color right there. All right. And then we can go to blend F here and do the same thing and just bring our right toggle over. And our left one kind of gives us a little bit more of a convincing vibe to it. And then we can come down here to overlay. Again, you can kind of play with that and see which ones work for you, which ones don't. Overlay is what I like. And now we need to just change up our um, opacity here because it's just a little bit too much. So we're just going to bring that yellow down. We're going to bring that white down. I mean, those are some bright lights right there. So we just need to bring those lights down just a little bit. And just remember, this is the kind of reflection or the glare of the light on the panel. This isn't the light itself. We'll deal with that here in just a, in a minute. All right, so we're right there. <clears throat> I like that. We're going to get our erase tool now and make sure that we're at a 100% opacity, 100% flow. And we're just going to come in here and paint out the top here of these lights just like that just like that come over here and we'll do the same thing with our yellow just like that 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 do 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 i'm gonna give this a little bit like it's really just kind of shining there let's see here I almost want, I'm just gonna do it just for the fun of it, okay? Because that, okay, hold on. Let's do this. Let's do it that way. And right there. Okay, I like that. So what happened is, let's see here. I think I had my 
brush a little too thin. I, I don't know. I wanted a little bit more spill off here in the... Something like that. And then we'll come in here with our erase tool and we can paint that out and give it that look like it's actually shining on the on the panel. Do the same thing here. There's a little bit of trial and error here. Even though I've done it already, I want to do it better. All right, and then we're going to come up here to our next layer here and push white, select white. I'm going to make this brush full circle now, full circle. And I'm going to come in here. Let's start with our yellow and just tap in a little bit of yellow right there on that light. Tap in just a little bit yellow right there on that light, right there on that light. And then we're going to come up here and do the same thing with our white right there. Right there, right there. All right, so obviously with our yellow, we're gonna go to a color dodge and then layer overlay here. And so way too much yellow. So we're gonna bring that tone down quite a bit. And I kind of like that right there. So I'm just gonna come in here with my erase tool now, once again, and just make sure that we know that that light isn't going to spill off onto where that light's not shining. So we're just going to come in here on each of these layers and paint that out. Now you might have a little bit of glare, if you will, that you would see on something like that. And we can actually make that if we want to. Okay. So what we can do, let's go back to our full screen here. We can come in here, grab our brush tool, make sure we're on white. And we could just come in here and do a, like a, something like that. And this is if you want to try and just different things here. Something like that. Anyway, let's go with that for the lights. I'm going to put that into its own file because then what we can do now is we can bring this down in opacity So, because those are a little bit light, something like that. We can also come in here and if we want to hit our erase tool, make our uh, opacity at 10%. I use this a lot. And we can just come in here and tone down some of those different elements here. So a lot of yellow there, a lot of yellow there. Anyway, you get the picture. That's how we turn on a light using Photoshop. Uh, don't like the fact that that is Do you notice that when I'm talking, I kind of cut off in mid sentence here? Yeah, that's what I thought. All right. So I'm bad about that because I'm thinking, I'm thinking, and I'm trying to get this thing right for you. Okay, so then I'm going to come in here. That's our car. Let's say that's, I mean, that's our uh, storage unit. So that's our storage unit um, lights here. Now we're going to go to the car, make sure we're on white. And I'm just going to, let's see here. We can change this brush shape up just a tiny bit. Maybe give it something like that. Come in there. Boom. And I don't know what an Audi, this Audi's lights look like. I didn't really go research this before I did this. I'm, I'm just going to assume for the sake of this video that maybe there are two. It looks like there might be three. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to do two. Boom, like that. And then we can, of course, come over here and just add something like that. All right. I'm not going to change the blend mode. You Let's try it. So that doesn't look real. Nothing else looks hard light, but I think hard light is basically just normal. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go with that. And you can bring that opacity down a little bit if that's just too bright for you. Let's leave it full blast for now. And then I'm going to come in here. And I don't know, again, I don't know what this car's headlights look like or headlamps look like or whatever you call it in 
Australia or the UK or Zimbabwe. I don't know. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to assume there's little LEDs right here because it looks like there might be. So just for the sake of doing this, we're going to come in here and just add in these little LEDs. And on this one, I am going to give it an overlay. Kind of gives it a little bit more of a LED vibe. Just like that. So that's kind of cool. If it does have those, that's how I would do it. And then I'm going to drop that opacity down just a little bit because I don't want those sticking out like a sore thumb. All right. Over here, we can get our erase tool. Let's say this is too bright. We like these. This is too bright on the right headlamp here. So we can come in here and just tone that down a little bit. And then we're looking good there. I think we're looking good there. I mean, that's kind of gnarly. We could also come in here if we wanted to and just stick a general big, you know, like it's going to glare here. Boom from the camera and then boom from the camera. That's looks a little awkward, something like that. And then let's see here what it would look like if we, that's kind of cool. That soft light kind of gives it a haze. See that haze? I kind of like that haze because that's kind of what I think I would imagine that it would look like in real life. My erase tool at one per, or at 10% opacity, I'm just going to kind of paint out a little bit here because I don't think it would be so much on this area here because that's kind of behind that's kind of behind the lamp there. So I'm going to go paint that out just a little bit. Uh, let's see, just maybe paint out a little bit there. Let's paint out the eye balls here, the, the actual lights. That's kind of cool. I dig that. All right. So then the nice thing when you group them all in a layer, let's say the lights from the uh, storage unit there are just too much. We can always bring those down like that and just put them on a rheostat, if you will. All right. So we're going to bring that up, but we can also do the same thing with the lights in the car. Too bright. Let's just tone them down just a tiny bit. Or if you like them full blast on, go for it. So that is how you turn on the lights in Photoshop. I'm going to show you one little, a little bonus here real quick that we can do to really kind of get this car to not look so flat. I'm not going to talk about the rest of the stuff that I mentioned earlier, but I will talk about this. All right. So we're going to make sure that we're on white. Let's go to overlay and these wheels look a little flat to me. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to come in here real quick and just paint in some things like that. Now I'm going to bring my opacity. Now that I have a couple on there, uh, opacity down just a little bit. And the nice thing when you paint an overlay, it doesn't work a great deal in the dark areas. So you can really just focus on the, you don't have to be like super, uh, slick with your, um, application like you don't have to be super detailed with it i guess i should say because it won't really paint so much in the in the dark areas it really just focuses if you're on white it just focuses on the white i know i'm probably not saying that correctly but you get the idea hopefully if you don't leave a comment and i'll try to explain it later or we'll make a video on it just specifically specifically as my kids would say when they were little on this <laughs> okay i actually have a video on this i'm not sure where it is here on youtube that kind of goes through some of this part of it and how i do this kind of enhance those highlights there on the wheels those look kind of gnarly i like that it might be a little too much though um, that's the key. You know, that's the trick when we're dealing, dealing with our, the art of composite photography, the art of editing is no, is to know when to pull back just a little bit, like to know when it's too much. If we were to go hundred percent, that's way too much. It looks like the wheels are glowing. So we just want to tone that down and just give those, I mean, they're super cool wheels. So we just want to make them pop a little bit. So I'm going to say around 38. Let's do that. 
another layer here real quick. <laughs> I could make this video super long, but I don't want to do that to you. All right, make sure that we're on an overlay on white and let's go white and black here. And then we can just come in here and really, you know, enhance some of these sexy lines that this car has. I mean, this car is super sexy. I love this car. And then in the black here, you got some really nice white edges here. And we can really just bring those out. And then we can just pull in those blacks and just make it look like it has that angle to it, that depth to it. Just like that. I like that. And it's subtle, right? It's subtle. You don't want to do too much. Doing too much kind of defeats the whole purpose. Go back to our white. We just want to bring this sexy line here on the door up. We have the sexy lines right here on the edge that we can bring up. This is a sexy, sexy car. I think this is a cool car. And then just bring that in here and we can just bring a little bit more depth into these area of the areas of the car. You gotta be careful. You don't want it to look too painterly, especially on a car, because uh, it can. This area underneath, I want to darken that. It gives it depth because I know that's tucking up underneath it. <clears throat> and I just want to give more depth to that area. So on a car, especially when you're painting in these areas, you want to use long strokes, you know, through the whole thing. You don't want to just paint it because then you will get, or you don't want to do small strokes because you will get that painterly effect. And we don't want that. And then we can highlight this logo here with what we're doing. The white, go back to black. We'll bring in those darks a little bit more. So now we have a better uh, feel of that. Bring up our whites here on the sexy line over the windows. Awesome. Anyway, you get the idea. That's it. The last and final thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a copy of the whole thing here and one thing that is bothering me with this image is this car the perspective of the car is just a tiny bit off from the perspective of the ground all right so we i'm going to change that just really quick here uh come in here to liquefy and this is not going to be perfect by any means this will not be perfect but i just want to give you an idea of what i'm talking about so the angle of this car the fact it looks like Maybe the camera was just a tad bit higher than it should have been. Could have come down just a little bit lower and we would have changed that perspective a little bit. And so I'm going to come in here. You got to be careful when you're doing this. And I'm just going to come up here and just bring the edge of that car up over here. And I need to bring the back and in like that. I'm going to bring this back down just a tiny bit. And just that little bit is going to change the perspective to where it actually works, I think. All right, so it's the difference between that and this. You see the difference? Now, when you do the whole thing like this, you get a little bit of uh, liquefying of the scene in the back, which I would not do. I would actually wanna do this on the car layer only uh, and I probably wouldn't even do it like this. I would probably just angle the car a little bit differently uh, and maybe use my liquify to or warp tool to just bring that front edge over there up and, and that edge over there. The other way that you can prevent this too is to photograph the scene first. And then when you go photograph the car, you know exactly where you need to put that camera. And I can make a tutorial on that later on as well. But that is our car in this awesome scene uh, with the awesome lights on now, turned on or off, turned off and turned on, turned off and turned on. And you can also see the, the sexy lines kind of coming out here. And how we bring those darks in, those lights up, it's kind of cool. Look at in the black here, right here. 
without that, you, you kind of have a muddy black. And then you bring this in and boom. And then we can also come in here and let's do this real quick. <laughs> it's nonstop, all right? So come in here and I'm going to put in three layers here. Boom, boom, boom. All right. And we're just going to, I don't need to turn those off. Come up here and we're going to go to our shadows. I'm going to come out just a little bit so we can see it a little bit better there. All right. So, you know, you can probably see it fine there. All right. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to bring my blues down. I'm going to bring my cyan up. just like that and then we're going to come in here to the highlights and we're going to bring our yellows up and our reds up and give it that orange-ish look and then we can come over here to our mid-tones kind of do the same flipping thing right there and I want to just make sure that we go to our shadows again I just want to tweak a little bit more on that that's kind of gnarly right there. I'm going to group all of that. And then we can just bring that tone down a little bit. Just about like that. And then I can also come in here and make a black and white layer. And we can bring that down just a tad bit. If you don't want it so saturated. All right, so without the desaturation, it's very subtle. Without the tone, you can see. Look look at what that does to your blacks. It takes it from looking kind of muddyish to really saturating or, you know, bringing some depth into the colors that we have in this image and the blacks. Just bring some depth into it. I just love toning an image like this. So anyway, that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to actually stop doing this and we're going to close this show out. Alrighty, so that's how you turn on the lights in Photoshop. Real quick, jump on over to photoillustrator.com. Check out the premium compositing tutorials, the Make Awesome Pictures podcast, and everything else that I have going on there. And I'll see you on the next episode of the Make Awesome Pictures video tutorial series here on YouTube.